Hi, thanks for tuning in. I'm Eduardo Fonseca from the Music Technology Group of Universidad Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. And I'm presenting our work on unsupervised contrastive learning of sound event representations. This is a collaboration between the Music Technology Group and the Insight Center at Dublin City University. And you can find code for the experiments on GitHub. So our task is to learn sound event representations in an unsupervised fashion. And by a sound event, we mean uh, everyday sounds like footsteps or dog barking and so on. And the motivation is that we often have access to large amounts of uh, unlabeled data, but only to small portions of manually labeled data, which is always uh, more costly to produce. And so we are interested in techniques able to leverage unlabeled data, such as self-supervised learning, where we learn representations without explicit human supervision. And the idea here is to generate pseudo-labels by looking at patterns of the data. And the key factor is how we design these proxy tasks to generate the pseudo-labels, train neural networks, and produce useful representations. Specifically, our work focuses on contrastive learning, which is basically learning by comparing. So we compare pairs of positives and pairs of negative examples. And the ultimate goal is to produce a semantically structured embedding space where representations for the similar examples are pulled together and representations for these similar examples are further away. And this is our proposed approach where our proxy task consists of a similarity maximization task inspired by recent work on visual representation learning seen clear. Specifically, we maximize the similarity between differently augmented views of sound events, where the input to our pipeline is log male spectrograms of sound events, and the output is the embedding representations H after a convolutional encoder. So let's go through every step of this pipeline. We first sample time frequency patches within every clip. So the figure shows the spectrogram of footsteps where time is in the vertical axis and frequency is in the horizontal axis. And we simply sample two random patches within the clip. Um, the reason why we do this is that this is a natural form of data augmentation. We basically capture the same source, footsteps, but chances are that every patch has different specific patterns of footsteps. And this is beneficial in our experiments. The second thing that we do is what we call mix pack, um, which is essentially mix the incoming patch XI with an unrelated background BI to produce a mixed example according to this equation. So the goal here is to reduce the mutual information between the incoming patches in blue and red, while at the same time uh, keeping the semantics of every patch, as the labels that apply to the mixed example are those of the constituent sources. Uh, you can find more details in our paper, but here we just mentioned that um, we do some energy compensation to ensure that the incoming patch XI is dominant over the background to prevent aggressive transformations. The third thing that we do is data augmentation. Um, we select simple data augmentations um, and we apply them directly over the time frequency patches. These are the, the, the augmentations that we consider. In bold are those that we found beneficial. And the way that this works is that every augmentation has one or more hyperparameters and we randomly sample them from a distribution for every patch. So at this point, 
we have differently augmented views of the same footstep sound, XI tilde and XA tilde. And the next step is to map these views to a low dimensional representation H, which will be used for downstream tasks once the training is over. And as encoder, we compare different architectures, including ResNet, VGG, and a convolutional recurrent net, all of them after we remove the final classification layer. The final block of our pipeline is a projection head that maps the representation H to a L2 normalized embedding where the contrastive loss is going to be applied. Following previous work in visual representation learning, we adopt a simple MLP with one hidden layer and a nonlinearity. And finally, the resulting embeddings set are compared with a contrastive loss, in our case, normalized temperature scaled cross entropy, which has a softmax structure and cosine similarity as the scoring function with a temperature that adjusts its sensitivity. So what we have here in the numerator is the similarity of ZI and ZJ, which are the embeddings associated to the differently augmented views of the same initial example. And this is maximized. At the same time, in the denominator, we have the similarity of all possible negative pairs, and this is minimized. And so by solving this task, what this function is doing is essentially pulling together the representations of the positive examples and pushing apart the representations of the negative ones. And by doing this, hopefully useful audio representations can emerge. We evaluate our approach using the FSD Noisy 18K dataset, which consists of 20 classes, 80,000 clips, and over 40 hours of singly labeled audio data. This dataset was proposed to investigate label noise mechanisms, and so most of the train set has noisy labels in blue, whereas only a small subset is manually curated and therefore reliable in terms of labels. We don't use audio set because that would be intractable for our compute resources. However, the proposed data set still has a relatively large amount of per class training data. The methodology that we follow consists of two stages. First, unsupervised representation learning with our approach. Here, we train on the noisy set without labels, and we validate on the clean set. We use in labels in a KNN evaluation, which consists of estimating the embedding set for each patch, uh, then comparing it with every other patch through cause and similarity, and finally predicting labels by majority voting. Um, this allows us to have a quick estimate of semantic representation quality without further training. Now, once the training is over and we have learned a representation, we evaluate this representation with supervised tasks, now using labels. We adopt linear evaluation, which consists of training an additional linear classifier on top of the pre-training embeddings. And we also do end-to-end -end fine tuning where we fine tune the model after initializing it with the pre-trained weights. Here, the two downstream tasks that we use are those enabled by the proposed dataset, meaning fine tuning on a larger set of noisy labels and fine tuning on a smaller set of clean labels, both relevant scenarios for sound event research. And here are the results. We first analyze the impact of specific stages of our pipeline using the ResNet architecture as encoder. The table shows the KNN validation accuracy for several ways of sampling patches, including sampling at random and separating the patches by a fixed number of frames. And we see that the best results are obtained by sampling at random, while the worst ones 
are obtained using exactly the same patch. We also see that overlapping patches, uh, which happens when the distance is less than 100 frames, is detrimental. And all these results accord with previous work on visual contrastive learning. We also analyze the effect of mixed pack, and we find out that mixing patches with unrelated backgrounds is beneficial, and also that ingesting the energy so that the foreground patch is dominant over the background one is also helpful. This prevents too harsh augmentations. And we also explore different data augmentation techniques, first individually, and we find out that random resize cropping and spec augment are the top performing ones. Um, the cropping that we apply is very mild, so it provides a small time and frequency stretching, as well as a small frequency transposition. And for spec augment, we apply time and frequency masking. Then we explore compositions of several augmentations, including the cropping one, and we come up with these two uh, combinations that are uh, the best in our experiments. Still, we know that more exhaustive exploration of these compositions will likely lead to better results at the expense of more intensive experiments. Now we evaluate our learned representation using our best setup. We first report the supervised baselines, meaning training the different models from scratch that you can see here with the number of weights in millions. The main observation here is that ResNet performs worse than the others, presumably due to the larger capacity that it has compared to the others that could be overfitting the not super large amount of data and the noisy labels. In linear evaluation, however, uh, the ResNet shows top performance, demonstrating that a larger capacity is better for unsupervised contrastive learning. In fact, here it exceeds the supervised performance. For the other two models, most of the supervised performance is recovered. We run experiments, uh, fine-tuning the model after initializing it with pretend weights. The goal here is to measure the benefit of unsupervised pre-training, PT in the table, with respect to training from scratch, random in the table, and for the two tasks that we consider, using a larger noisy set and a small clean set. And as you can see, unsupervised contrastive pre-training is best for all the models and the two tasks considered. It's worth mentioning that ResNet shows the worst performance when trained from scratch, potentially due to limited data and due to the label quality. However, when we do unsupervised pre-training, the performance is top, presumably alleviating these problems. We also see that great improvements are obtained in the smaller clean tasks. And finally, one thing that we observe is that the pre-trained performance uh, shows little degradation between the both tasks, despite then having substantial differences in training data, as the figure illustrates. A possible explanation for this is that in the smaller clean task, we are fine tuning on a small amount of data, but data which is unseen and cleanly labeled, whereas in the noisy task, we are fine tuning on the same data that we used before for unsupervised learning, which is now affected by label noise. To conclude, we've proposed a framework for unsupervised contrastive learning of sound event representations, where the proxy task consists of maximizing the similarity between differently augmented views of the same spectrogram. We've seen that successful representations can be learned by tuning the compound of patch sampling, mix back, and data augmentation. And through experiments, we've seen that unsupervised contrastive pre-training can mitigate the impact of data scarcity and increase robustness against noisy labels. In particular, we saw that fine-tuning a model initialized with pre-trained weights outperforms supervised baselines. That's all. Thanks for listening. The code is available on GitHub, and please make sure to check our paper for further analysis and discussion.